of Amy School would like to welcome you on a tour of our village. The pub in Amen wasn't always known as the Percy Arms. First it was called the Bay Horse, then the Beverly Arms, before finally receiving its current name. Crane Lane runs alongside the hall and was originally built as a route to Goal. The owner of Emin Hall then shut Crane Lane because he wanted the land to hunt. So he had a road built on the site of the crossings and the bridle path which we still use today. There is an ancient bell wall that was uncovered by today's residents down Crane Lane. St David's Church in Airbid dates back to 1750 and occupies the site of an earlier church built in 1318. In 1897, during the Diamond Jubilee year of Queen Victoria, the village paid for the lich gate to be built at the entrance to the churchyard. Then, in the last war, the railings were removed to be used for ammunition and guns. Every year, the children of Airmen School visit the church to celebrate harvest and Christmas. The church hosts weddings and christenings and regular services on a Sunday. The old school opened in 1849. It was originally built as a Sunday school. In later years, a classroom was built outside when the school became too cramped. Often the children had their lessons on the river bank. Past teachers included Mrs Wilde and Mrs Twig. A new school in Amy opened in 1991 on the site of parkland used in days gone by for the hunting by the owners of the hall. The school today has four classrooms and outside there are different areas including a wood, a pond, a large playground and a field. Mrs Blaine, Mr Denwood and Mrs Hutton have been here since it has opened. Airmen Clock Tower was commissioned by George Percy, the second Earl of Beverly in 1834. It was built in memory of the Percy family, a well-known landmark. It stands 70 feet above the high street. Airmen Hall is situated on the high street and was built by the Smithson family some time after 1656. It is now divided up into several individual homes. Large gardens remain at the back of the hall. We have been looking at the history of the village and created a class poem about an imaginary monster that lives in the river air. <laughs> As the clock strikes midnight, the monster awakes. It rises and it wriggles out of its lair. It glides through the river towards the village and hurls itself onto the riverbank, sliding in the mud. Searching for prey, its dark, slimy body slithers along the high street. Plus her eyes scan every corner. Searching, searching, searching for food. Behind closed doors, children are sleeping, not knowing what danger is lurking. Its long whip like tail forces trees to the ground, but still the children sleep. Glowing eyes light up gloomy rooms. Searching, searching, searching for food. Stretching sinewy arms reaching through windows, snatching sleepy children from their beds. Silently creeping back to the river, returning to its lair. Worried parents gather, searching, searching, searching for their children. Following mysterious footprints, slimy trails lead them down to the riverbank where the trail suddenly ends. Waiting, waiting until the tide. As the water level falls out of its hidden lair, the monster's venomous fangs appear covered in blood. A deafening roar hits their ears. They fire their weapons into its cavernous mouth. 
10 in a row to a scream. The children are rescued the monster dead. The children of Emin are safe in their beds. Long live the children! <laughs> As the clock strikes midnight, the monster awakes. It writhes and wriggles out of its lair. It glides through the river towards the village. And hurls itself onto the bank. Sliding in the mud. Searching for prey, its dark, slimy body slithers along the high street. Bloodshot eyes scan every corner. Searching, searching, searching for food. Behind closed doors, children are sleeping not knowing what danger is lurking. Its long, whip-like tail forces trees to the ground, but still the children sleep. Glowing eyes light up gloomy rooms, searching, searching, searching for food. Stretching sinewy arms reach in through windows, snatching sleepy children from their beds. Silently creeping back to the river, returning to its lair. Worried parents gather, searching, searching, searching for their children. Following mysterious footprints, slimy trails lead them down to the riverbank where the trail suddenly ends. Waiting, waiting until low tide. As the water level falls out of its hidden lair, the monster's venomous fangs appear covered in blood. A deafening roar hits their ears. They fire their weapons into its cavernous mouth, turning the roar to a scream. The children are rescued. The monster dead. The children of Airmen are safe in their beds. Long live the children.